In this video, we are going to talk about the major differences between a purely inductive circuit and a purely capacitive circuit. But just take a note, we will be talking about the complete circuit and not a standalone inductor and capacitor, right? So let us start with the first and the important difference. That is, what do we mean by a purely inductive circuit and what do we mean by a purely capacitive circuit? So when we say purely inductive circuit, it means it has a zero resistance and the capacitance is infinite. Only then we can call it as purely inductive circuit. On the other hand, the capacitive circuit is a pure capacitive circuit if it has a zero inductor and the resistance of it is infinite. Only then we can call a circuit as purely capacitive circuit. So that is the first difference. The second difference is now we know that inductor opposes the change in current. So if you're passing a constant current, it is fine. But the, uh, if you're passing an alternating current, it is not okay. Inductor will oppose that. And as a result, when the current is maximum, the voltage is zero. And when current is zero, the voltage will be maximum. So if you see the waveform, you will notice that voltage has a head start and current is lagging behind the voltage. So if you see here, let's say the voltage is getting zero at 90 degrees, right? The current is getting zero at 180 degrees and the difference between the two is 90 degree, right? And that is the reason why current lags the voltage by 90 degree in case of a purely inductive circuit, right? In capacitive circuit, the capacitor opposes the change in voltage and as a result, when voltage is maximum, the current is zero. And when voltage is zero, the current will be maximum. And if you draw the waveform of a purely in capacitive circuit, then it will look like this. Now here you can see, uh, here the current has head start and voltage is lagging behind the current by 90 degrees. So if current is getting reaching a zero value at 90 degree, then the voltage is reaching a zero value at 180 degrees. The difference between the two is again a 90 degree, right? And that is the reason why in capacitive circuit, current leads the voltage by 90 degree. Now this is exactly opposite than what we have seen in the inductive circuit. In the inductive circuit, the current lags the voltage by 90 degree, right? And that is the major difference. So the second difference what we can write here is, in purely inductive circuit, current lags voltage by 90 degree. And in purely capacitive circuit, current leads the voltage by 90 degree. Now I already have a dedicated videos explaining about uh, how inductor works in AC and how capacitor works in AC. I'll give you a link for that uh, complete playlist down in the description. You can go and check that out for more details. Now the third one. Now in the inductive circuit, we know that inductor opposes the change in current. So if you're passing a constant current through inductor, inductor is okay. But if you're passing a changing current, then inductor will oppose that. Now this opposition is different from what a resistor offers, right? And hence we have a dedicated name for such opposition and we call it as a reactance. And since this is specifically offered by an inductor, we call it as inductive reactance and it is denoted by XL. Clear? That is about inductive circuit. Now talking about the capacitive circuit, capacitor opposes the change in voltage. Constant voltage, capacitor is okay with that. But if voltage is changing, then the capacitor will oppose that, right? And this opposition, again, it is different from what a resistor offers. And we have again a separate name for it, uh, which is nothing but the reactance. Since this is offered by a capacitor, we call it as capacitive reactance and it is denoted by XC, right? So the next difference we can write it as opposition offered by purely inductive circuit is known as inductive reactance and it is denoted by XL. Opposition offered by purely capacitive circuit is known as capacitive reactance and it is denoted by XC. Clear? That is the third one. Now moving on, in inductive reactance, uh, we know the formula for it. It is XL is equals to 2 pi FL, where F is the frequency and L is the inductor. Now the formula clearly says that frequency or let's say the opposition inductive reactance is directly proportional to the supply frequency. So if you change the frequency, the value of inductive reactance will also change. So if 50 Hertz uh, value of uh, inductive reactance is X, then at 100 Hertz, the value of reactance will be 2X, which means it will cause current to drop from the circuit, right? 
So always remember that when frequency increases, the inductive reactance will also increase and vice versa. Now exactly opposite to that in capacitive circuit, uh, the supply frequency is inversely proportional to the capacitive reactance. And as a result, if frequency is increasing, the capacitive reactance will decrease, which will cause more current to flow from the circuit. Now let me quickly show you that using a simple circuit simulation here. So here we have a simple circuit. You can see we have a 50 Hertz AC supply and a capacitor is connected here. So firstly, the frequency is 50 Hertz. We will see what is the current flowing in the circuit here. So you can see you have to see the RMS value here and why RMS value again I have a dedicated video on that you can go and check that out I will provide a link for that video down in the description. So when frequency is 50 Hertz the RMS value of current is triple one milli ampere clear. Now what we will be doing we will be doubling the frequency so we'll make it 100 Hertz here and as per the information we have when frequency is increasing the capacitive reactance should decrease which means the current in the circuit should go up. So we'll see if that happens or not. So you see the frequency is 100 Hertz and the RMS value of current is again it is doubled now it is 223 milli ampere. So this is the effect of frequency on capacitive reactance and on inductive reactance. So the Inductive reactance or capacitive reactance that you are getting at 50 Hertz frequency will be different on 60 Hertz frequency. So it will vary uh, based on the frequency, right? So the next difference that we can write is inductive reactance increases with increase in supply frequency and vice versa. On the other hand, capacitive reactance decreases with increase in supply frequency and vice versa. Clear? So that is the fourth difference. Now moving on. Now inductive circuit we know that inductive circuit do not consume any real power. We have seen in the previous videos wherein the power the net power in the inductive circuit is zero. So actual power consumption is zero but inductive circuit do consume the reactive power which is given by Q is equals to V times current volt ampere reactive right. So inductive circuit uh, consumes the reactive power. On the other hand the capacitive circuit again capacitive circuit do not consume any uh, actual power the net power in the capacitive circuit is zero but it do supplies the reactive power to the circuit. So uh, we have discussed this in the capacitor video as well uh, the resultant power is negative power that means capacitor is supplying power back in the circuit and that is the reason why you will see in power system also capacitor banks are specifically installed so that they can supply the necessary reactive power to the system. So the major difference between these two circuit is uh, inductive circuit consumes the reactive power whereas capacitive circuit supplies the reactive power. Again I have talked about uh, this in, in detail uh, in the AC circuits video you can go watch those that playlist uh, the link for that is given down in the description. So we can write the difference as pure inductive circuit consumes reactive power and on the other hand pure capacitive circuits supplies the reactive power. Now if you want to get this PDF copy wherein I have given the differences between purely resistive, purely inductive and purely capacitive circuit you can get that for free you just have to go to the website or download my official app links for those is again given in the description. You can go log in or sign up join the free course uh, which is AC circuits basics and then you can download this PDF for your reference right. So that's all for this video guys I hope this was helpful and if you if you are finding this content helpful please do let me know that via the comment section given below and also like the video that will help uh, the video to reach to other viewers as well. So thank you so much for watching I really appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next one but till then keep watching keep learning.